Hello and welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is American Ben. Guess what? We've decided to add a couple more episodes to our Strongest Aliens series. I don't know when this series will actually end, but I promise to stop promising that it will soon. The Forerunners are one of the most powerful alien races in the history of the galaxy. Think the Covenant, but not dumb as shit. As any ancient powerful beings, their legacy paints them as gods, as they have built some of the most powerful weapons ever imagined. So today we are going to cover their flaws and advantages. Don't forget if you enjoy the video, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell. We start with the advantages. When adolescent forerunners called manipulars are ready to work within their rate or class, they undergo artificially induced biological transformation. The forerunners are capable of advanced genetic engineering and biochemical manipulation. This in effect means that forerunners can choose their adaptations to a degree, and presumably select the adaptations that would most suit them in their environments, rather than relying on natural selection to evolve, a more unpredictable process. Of course, the ability to artificially mutate the members of of their race means that forerunners can adapt themselves in all ways to be superior to other beings. Mutation aside, body armor is foundational to the forerunner's strength. Forerunner body armor isn't just a tool of the warriors either. It is an advanced technology that universally augments their entire species. Almost all forerunners wear the armor for their entire lives. Not only does their body armor protect them from damage, but it also enhances them in a variety of other ways. The body armor has a neurally integrated computer system that augments the wearer's memory and perception by providing access to endless amounts of information, thus making forerunners smarter. Then, the life support and medical technology contained in the armor not only can heal grave injuries, but renders wearers virtually immortal, including in terms of longevity and youthful appearance. Actually, the armor makes it so forerunners rarely ever need to sleep despite having a biological need to do so. The armor also enables direct information transfer from one wearer to another, meaning that forerunners are capable of instantaneous and yet silent communication, and more specifically, forerunners are able to send out information and commands to the masses all at once. Their armor aside, forerunners still have superior intelligence. Higher form forerunners can process enormous amounts of information at once, including information passed from thousands of other forerunner body armor through direct transfer. Forerunners have extensive memory banks and can recall from them with pinpoint accuracy. As we previewed with their body armor, Forerunner technology is their greatest advantage. It would not be controversial to say that their technological innovations are unrivaled in the galaxy. Now tech here is going to be an overarching advantage with many smaller advantages below it. First, Forerunners can produce their technology at a rapid pace and without major production facilities. Their advanced body armor can be manufactured right on one of their ships by small units of engineers. Actually, their ships themselves can be grown locally using a piece of technology known as a design seed, which encodes data and contains machinery that can be used to quickly build machines. There's very few pieces of Forerunner technology that can't be constructed on site and completed in a matter of seconds by design seeds. Where the Forerunner Forerunners do actually have dedicated manufacturing plants, production is even faster. For example, their manufacturing facility on Onyx is able to produce a Sentinel every six seconds. You've heard of alien races using light in their weapons, but the Forerunners have figured out a way to transform light into a solid state and use it for structures, another quick and resource light way for them to build up their planets. Then, there's of course the Halo Array, a network of massive ring-shaped superweapons the Forerunners built as a last resort to combat the Flood or really any existential threat to the galaxy. Basically, the Forerunners built a weapon capable of wiping out all life in the galaxy in a single firing, a useful device when the biggest threat to the perpetuation of life is a parasitic force that lives to consume other life. As a complement to the Halo Array, the Forerunners also came up with Shield Worlds. These installations are a defensive answer to the Flood. The Shield Worlds are basically supreme military fortresses that can act as refuges for local life in the case of Flood invasion. 
From these worlds, the protected populations can carry out attacks on the flood while also remaining protected from them. Which of course means that the flood outside starves. And whereas the Halo Array is a network of just a handful of Halo rings, shield worlds have been constructed all over the galaxy, with at least 673 known to exist and thousands more planned. The Forerunners also have a long list of artificial intelligence constructs, which they call Ancelas. Ancelas can be anything from virtual assistants to robotic monitors to their contender class AI, which are capable of commanding an entire fleet of ships. Remember, the Forerunners are smart and any beings with high level intelligence know work is best done by others. And that is not an endorsement of human slavery on this channel, but we are slightly pro-alien child soldier. Let's move on. The Forerunners also have all sorts of energy shields at their disposal, and while other races might have such technology, the Forerunners have a mastery in this regard. They have fields that can manipulate gravity, restrain enemies, block the movement of ships, protect planets from stellar radiation, and even harness stars for energy production. The Forerunners are perhaps the only race that can compete with the Necrons from 40k in faster than light travel. The Forerunners have a complete understanding of slipstream space, the extra dimensional medium used in Halo for superluminal travel. They can travel anywhere in the galaxy instantaneously and with absolute precision. They know how to store matter of large mass and volume in slipstream space for infinite amounts of time, and they can send objects through slipstream space, basically affording them a faster than light version of the post office. Meanwhile, the actual post office can't even figure out how to hand out stamps correctly. Forerunners have also figured out a way to build weapon systems that can fire into a slip space dimension and yet affect a target in real space. Finally, the Forerunners have also figured out superluminal communication by sending message carrier waves through slip space. As their FTL travel is masterful, you can bet that the Forerunners have excellent ships as well. Beyond their FTL capabilities, Forerunner ships are massive. The Didac ship Mantle's approach was 231 miles in height, 86 miles in width, and 89 miles in length. Oh, and if you would like to convert that to kilometers, just multiply by terrorist and divide by communism. Anyway, the Mantle's approach, according to records, wasn't even the largest Forerunner ship. Forerunner ships are also not entirely made out of matter. They are part matter and part hard light. Nonetheless, the light composition of the ships means that their layouts can be configured somewhat at will to better fit certain situations. And these ships also have plenty of advanced cloaking technology as well. Lastly, ships like Mantle's approach are outfitted with tens of thousands of weapons, from beam cannons to particle weapons to superluminal travel and communication disrupting weapons. Of course, they also also often feature a heavy ion weapon system for some good old healthy world obliteration. There's nothing like the smell of planet cracking in the morning. Along with the armament on their ships, Forerunners aren't lacking for handheld weapons either. They have a wide assortment of energy and energy field based weaponry. Forerunner infantry weapons often utilize a variety of different ammunition from hard light to ion beams to antimatter. The Forerunner scattershot can fire ricocheting projectiles, and the bolt shot has a powerful burst function. The Forerunners also have a diverse array of explosives as well. Best of all, robots such as Armigers often are the ones to wield Forerunner weapons in ground combat, while the Forerunners sip on robot tier lines lattes on their ships. Oh, and if all this tech hasn't been enough, the Forerunners are also capable of extracting a life form's entire mental and biological patterns and memories and encoding them into another body or storing the information as data. If the Forerunners lose a powerful and knowledgeable leader, they can just copy his knowledge and abilities into a replica or multiple replicas or into a robot. They can also create replicas of their most powerful enemies if they get their hands on them and have them fight for the Forerunners. Okay, so like the Necrons, the Forerunners don't have many flaws, but let's see what we can bullshit. First off, Forerunner society is a caste society, not a social structure you'd expect of an intelligent alien race. The classes in Forerunner society are known as rates, with each race specializing in a certain field of work, and one's position and status in society is almost entirely determined by one's rate. This inevitably means that there isn't much in terms of meritocracy in Forerunner society. The abilities of their subjects are not fully discovered, as Forerunners are simply born into a profession and social status. And beyond that, 
forerunner society is conservative, and any forerunner who tries to break from tradition and follow a different path in life than the one set out for them will be castigated and treated as an outcast. Such does not inspire entrepreneurial thinking and innovation. And yet the forerunners have been successful in their technological developments anyway thanks to their high intelligence. But one wonders how long this will continue if their culture never evolves. At the core of the philosophy that undergirds forerunner society is the mantle of responsibility. In short, the mantle is a credo that endows the forerunners with a duty to protect all life in the galaxy, and the forerunners believe in the mantle religiously. As noble as such a belief sounds, in effect, all the mantle does is give the forerunners an excuse to dominate the galaxy with a supremacist mindset. Yes, the mantle does make the forerunners universal guardians of all life, but it also makes them the most important species in the galaxy as again, they are the guardians of all life. And so anything that the forerunners deem as a threat to them, they see as a threat to all life, and thus are free to carry out war as ruthlessly as necessary to secure the prosperity of their empire. The forerunners are happy to remove species from their homeworlds or even commit genocide if necessary. And by necessary, I mean if such species are a threat to forerunner dominance in the galaxy. This all said, the mantle is not quite an advantage, as overall it does call for peace in name, and this has resulted in a forerunner race that doesn't necessarily seek conquest with the same fervor that other alien races do. This hasn't stopped them from domination yet, but like with their society, one can see how eventually a more motivated race of powerful aliens could overthrow them. They're also not completely invincible aliens either. Anyways, that's the video. Please click somewhere up there to rank the forerunners on a scale of 1 to Five. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, comment down below, and let me know what you think about them. And as always, please remember to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. For now, my name is American Ben, and I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, peace.